Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I always hate interrupting such wonderful social social events. Uh, a very warm welcome to all of you joining us either in person or online for our finer, final Thursday Night Out of the season. This event will be recorded and available on our website after the event for those of you who couldn't make it tonight or uh, who'd like to revisit it at a later time. Uh, also, just a note on scheduling for the evening. For those of you who have already finished dinner, you're more than welcome to take your plates and, and bring them over to the uh, little rack over there where you can where Chris is busy moving plates back to the uh, kitchen. Um, but feel free, if you're still eating, to go ahead and enjoy. No rush. Um, we'll have some people coming around just to clear plates throughout the evening uh, to get that taken care of. Also, if you'd like to grab one more glass of wine before we begin, this would be a good time before the doors get closed. So go ahead and do that as I'm introducing you. Uh, my name is Nicholas Cassis, and I'm part of the clergy team here at Trinity by the Cove. We're so delighted that you're all here tonight, and a very special welcome to any visitors, or if you're part of Temple Shalom. There seems to be no shortage of conflict and violence in the world today. In the Ukraine, in the Middle East, these conflicts weigh heavy on our hearts, and we often don't know what to do in the face of such atrocities. But even in our own community, we face threats of conflicts, violence, prejudice, and anti-Semitism. So it is especially important to bring different members of our faith community together in solidarity with those who are suffering around the world, in our own midst, and to build bonds of friendship and mutual affection. If we can continually work on our relationships as people of goodwill, then perhaps together we can overcome hate with the light of our love. Thank you for honoring us with your presence tonight. Tonight, we are honored to be joined by Dr. Taras Falenko. Dr. Falenko is a noted scholar and performer of Ukrainian music, a graduate of the National Academy of Music in Kiev. He went on to serve as a member of the faculty and eventually as Associate Dean of Conducting and Voice. From the Academy, he was awarded a PhD in Historic Musicology, later earning a doctorate in Ethnomusicology from the University of Pittsburgh. For over 40 years, Taras has worked in the fields of history of music, ethnomusicology, and music performance, piano, organ, and choir director, successfully combining his work as a scholar, teacher, and performer. He has presented concerts throughout Europe and North America, making numerous media appearances, promoting the works of contemporary Ukrainian composers. Taras is the recipient of Fulbright and Petesh scholarships. The themes of his more than 100 academic publications embrace ethnic studies, musical culture and politics, ethnomusicology and music and poetry, including a book he co-authored with his mother. Tonight's program is part of Taras's ongoing effort to bring Ukrainian culture, particularly music, in focus for American audiences. The concert will highlight Ukrainian keyboard compositions from the 18th century to the present, threaded together with commentary providing context and insight. The program will also feature projected slides of Ukrainian visual art and contemporary photography. For Taras, music is his weapon during this time when the survival of Ukraine as a nation and as a culture faces existential threat. And before uh, I hand things over to Taras, a special thank you also to George Fechner and Christine Fulton, who are longtime friends of our guest and made it possible for him to be with us tonight. And I believe George would like to say a few words before we begin. Good evening. Thank you, Father, for hosting this in the kind words. But first and foremost, I have memory buds, taste buds that go back 70 plus years. And to come in tonight and find a Ukrainian meal. Ukrainian meal. 
So I got to know Taras about, uh, know him well a little over a year ago when they performed for the City of Asylum. I was so touched with the, of the poetry that evening. I was uh, touched by the music and touched by the words of human suffering. The stories about the extermination of a Ukrainian culture long before the current war. I said afterwards, Chrissy, we have to help them. So we've sponsored uh, Chautauqua and program. Uh, Susie, we have some people at Trinity by the Cove that spend their summers in western New York State, and we've sponsored programs in Pittsburgh, and we're so delighted to be here. For Taras, this is his ministry. It's a ministry of music. It's a ministry of the stories between the words and the music and the stories between the notes. Um, it's an emotive learning experience. If you're like me tonight, you'll remember the emotions of the evening for a long time because it, it's very emotional. It's emotional about suffering. It's emotional about courage. And it's emotional about help. Okay, Taras, it's your turn. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. I know that you know our life is busy with all, all kind of activities and endeavors, and every voice, every gesture, every hug means a lot. Means a lot for all Ukrainians because Ukraine now suffering, they bleeding, and without our support, without American support, this battle will be extremely difficult not only for Ukrainians, but for all of us, for, for humanity. Because they want to grab not only the land, but they want to grab a soul, they want to grab the culture, and destroy the culture. This is why I'm going to sh show and share with you some, uh, some music, some part of the mm, history, and, and tell you about my own experience. I just came from, from Ukraine in October, where he lectures and concerts, and I will play some music that are known to you, so please bear with me, because every piece that you're going to hear today will be unknown to you. And it's not your fault, it's the it's fault of, of those who oppress this culture, this music, to be, be known in the world. Uh, I'm going to play piece that connect two worlds, folk tradition and contemporary. It's called Kolomaika, means dance. It's like this, this table. If, if you stand up and move around 60 times in the mountains, it will be this dance. <laughs> Thank you. 
I decided to, to start this evening with this kind of brisk dance to show that dance, music, art and culture is a bloodline of Ukraine. For centuries it's been oppressed, for centuries it's been put aside. And what happened in your life if poetry banned, literature banned, printed word destroyed, music destroyed, oral tradition is very important. And through music, people share a lot of thoughts and, and the history as well. When I was in Ukraine, I felt that people live life like this. The second year of the non-stop tragedy, war, and losses. All my friends, whom I know, and, and mostly artists and, and musicians and, and painters, all of them lost someone. Neighbor, friend, relatives, workers, co-workers. It's, it's, quite, it's quite horrible to talk to people and talking about daily life and, and about what they're doing and suddenly, but you know what? I lost him. And I remember we talk about, we have a coffee with him and now he's not here. And this kind of multi-layer of, of emotional life, I, I, would, I, would, I would call it a tragic polyphony. Polyphony is many layers in music, polyphonic, many, many sounds. So this is how uh, I, I met my friend in, this, in the square next to the Minister of External Affairs with, with the Russian tanks that's supposed to be only three days after invasion on the same square. So they promised that we are going to conquer Ukraine three, four days, max. They even brought a uniform to parade in, in Kyiv. Uh, apparently, war affects every, every fraction, every, every segment of your life uh, in, in Ukraine. This is what I, I witnessed in the main square, and every week or two they change this poster with the fallen soldiers, most of them volunteers. And a lot of women, I'm, I'm surprised, very close to 50,000 women now join the armed forces. And they are on the front line, not only the medical and, and clerical, but on, on the front line. Uh, um, I'm going to, I'm not going to, going to show you only, only just a tragic point, but this is organ church. I mean, uh, a church in, in, um, in Kyiv, where I played organ for the first time in my life. Unfortunately, organ is burned down, so the organ does not exist. But organ was a prohibited instrument in Soviet Union, so I played organ quietly at night, just giving a bottle of beer to the man who opened the door for me at night, and I played organ from 5 o'clock till 6 o'clock. And it was a beautiful experience because it was stars, it was night, and we played music by Bach on the organ. Never expect to play organ anywhere in my life. And by the way, I, I, I played uh, for six years as an organist in the Episcopal Church in Pittsburgh. And because we have a privilege today, not only have wonderful people, but, but also have a lot of surprises. When I approached this beautiful instrument, I found accidentally uh, that is made in Germany. And just guess when? 1751 in Germany. Just maybe Bach witnessed this organ because he died just on the on same year. And I'm going to and I'm going to play organ, right? But I need assistance because after the concert, look at the, or the, the size of the organ. I never seen anything like this. I saw the pump in the air like this, but, but with these the pedals, you blow the air inside of the organ. And it sounds like... Sir? Mm. 
This is not Ukrainian music, this is Bach. <laughs> and Bach was known in his life not, a, not as a composer. Very few people know him about as a composer. He knew, he knew them as an improviser. He can improvise better than anybody else, first and foremost. And, and taking a liberty to play on this beautiful instrument, I'm going to imp improvise for you based upon teams from Ukraine. One more time, Koda. Thank you, George. century 10, 11, 12, and beyond. I'm going to take a snippet from 18th century music. Name Dmitro Bartnyansky. Probably you never heard about him. He was, he was one of well, the most prominent composer of his time in Ukraine and later in the Russian Empire. Because as usual, if something special happened, people had been taken from the provinces to New York to Paris. <laughs> so in this case, he lived basically some of his life in Russian Empire, but he was educated in Italy because very famous composer from Bologna, Galuppi, was also in the service of Russian Empire. And he took Bretnansky to Padua, to Venice, where he wrote six operas, Italian opera, and he has huge, tremendous success. And he didn't want to go after six to seven years study. So they grab him and move back to. But you never heard his name, but, but you heard the name Joseph Haydn and Mozart. I'm going to play for you three excerpts. 22nd excerpt Haydn, Mozart, and Bortnansky. Not to show you the level of artistry. But I just want you to identify where is Mozart, where is Haydn, and where is Bartnyansky. Are you ready for challenge? <laughs> One, two,
You said Mozart first, right? Who else for Mozart first? Ten uh, percent. Wonderful. It's very close to. And uh, and the second was second Mozart. So first Mozart, second Mozart. Wonderful. And Bardiansky first. I. My point is, you're all right, because this is confusion. <laughs> they use the same elements of the 18th century classical music. Mozart, Bartniansky, and Haydn. First was Haydn, second Mozart, third Bartniansky. But I can put them vice versa, and it will be exactly the same beautiful music. I'm going to play for you a uh, sonata in C major that he wrote uh, for uh, early piano, it's called forte piano, or clavecin, means harpsichord. So the end of the, of the Baroque period and the and beginning of classical period, Bach died in 1750. Brodnianski was born in 1751. Oh. And the piano and, and harpsichord kind of coincide. So this is why he wrote this piece either for piano or for harpsichord. And you would hear, my left hand is very simple because it was probably arranged for the harpsichord. Harpsichord has only three octaves, three and a half octaves. I'm going to play for you a piece by Bratnyansky, C major sonata.
This is the second part of this piece. <laughs> and the third part of this piece, I'm going to play for you on harpsichord, how it can be heard originally in the 18th century. Just imagine on every table we have candle and chandeliers come, and we have wigs and beautiful dogs around us, and you will hear the, 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 the music by Portnansky for harpsichord. It's, it, you, know, you know, it's fine because at that time, at that time, the, the door is open and they said, the coffee been served, sir. And Brodnansky played as a servant in the Russian court. So at that time, this is why we have not too many music for, uh, for, uh, for, for string instruments or for piano, because all his scores owned by owner. Haydn was lucky because he has Count Estergazi who allowed him to have this manuscripts and play his music, the same as Mozart, but not Brodnansky. So this is why we have very few music survived. And he wrote mostly for choral music, for, uh, for church. He was, uh, he was actually the founder of Russian imperial church music. And he wrote so, so, so many pieces that, that uh, Eastern church based whole tradition on, on the music by Vedel and Brodnansky from, from Ukraine. And he put all his money to print his music. And he never did, and he died penniless. And you know who spent two and a half years or three years and a lot of money to edit his music and to publish? Peter Tchaikovsky, who also has origin from Ukraine because his grandfather was a Cossack from Ukraine. But this is another story. <laughs> Brodnansky. <laughs> only the second time in my life I have a privilege to play on three instruments in the same evening. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And to tune this instrument is very painful because harpsichord not hitting the string but plucking the string. And after two or three hours of playing, instrument became out of tune. So this is why they invented this monster because you don't have to tune every... So a gentleman came here to tune this and this instrument for me and for us. Wow. Again, as I said, uh, our culture and our music not well known. So this is why we're here and I'm grateful. And I want you to look at these three slides. One, two, three. 
a reason why I don't want you to read the slides. I just want you to look at them. Because from 1700 for 300 years, a constant prohibition on printing word, on education in middle school, on music, on transliteration, on poetry. At some point, Elsie, if, 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 you can, if you can jump to the previous one, and, and previous one, this is like in 20th century, but if you look at an 1863, the Baluyev order bans the state censors from allowing any printing of Ukrainian language, religious or popular educational literature. There has not been, there is, cannot be any separate little Russian languages. And if you ban language and church music and poetry and print and press, what else? Folk tradition, folk music prevailed and existed. You know, my, my knowledge of history of Ukraine mostly came from the singing that my family, our friends, they sing the songs with multiple lyrics and all these all these events in history. It came not from the school, not from academy. The, I was I was the first one who been asked to develop and, and teach and to teach course in Ukrainian music history in Academy of Music. However, some, some composers and some artists resist. Lysenko. Lysenko is the founder of Ukrainian music. He been ed educated in Leipzig, mostly in, in Germany. Because at, at that time, if you want to be a good singer, you only have to go to Bologna. If you want to be a good musician or violinist, cello, you can only go to Germany because otherwise you, you're good for nothing. And by the way, listen, when, when he was in Leipzig, he brought music by... by Chopin, to his teacher. And his teacher said to him, never bring this garbage to my class. This is impossible to contaminate my class with this type of music. So, Spen music wasn't accepted in 1860 in Germany as a, as a core. And Lysenko started to compose specifically in Chopin style, in Romantic style, bringing on one hand the best of Romanticism from Europe and folk tradition from Ukraine. This is a monument of Lysenko next to Opera House, and this is how I, I witnessed this monument last October. Uh, I'm going to play for you his, his early piece, it's called Elegy, uh, where he combined these this elements of, of harmony from Romantic period with some elements of for Ukrainian songs.
intentionally pick this piece for you because it's very short, but you, there's a drama inside of And this is not elegy. This is what drama elegy. This is how all his life, after he came back, not, not to stay as a concert pianist in Germany, but he came to Kiev, and, and he started to write music. 40 volumes of music being printed by Lysenko. He is only one composer in the world who wrote on one text, on one poetry, on one poet, 112 pieces on, on, on the lyrics by Shevchenko. Taras Shevchenko, he's, he's, a, he's one of the most famous poets in Ukraine. Uh, he was the first who started to incorporate the folk tradition, folk music. At, at his time, if, if you find somebody who played this instrument, it's called bandura on the street. He just almost, almost like, even, even I, I, I was even afraid to touch this person because he's so low. He's like untouchables in India at that time. And, and he brought this musician to the stage. And, and, he, and he forced people to listen to his music. Not only listen to his music, but, but he also incorporated his music in, in his rhapsodies, in his, in his sonatas. And it was exactly the same when Liszt or Brahms used the same elements of the, of the folk. To, like, this is a Brahms rhapsody. <laughs> drama and and this is a rhapsody by by list but by Ferenc list with at symbolons at the beginning play for you music by Lysenko. And you hear this these elements of Bandura with this. With these modes from the Middle Eastern tradition. Uh, speaking of, of Middle Eastern tradition, uh, Lysenko would like to establish his own school. And people collect money for his school at the very end of his life. Finally, because he always gives money to events. And instead of just having apartments next to the ocean in Italy, he developed a Ukrainian music school. But a first paragraph of the statue of the school was acceptance of the Jewish students in my school. At that time, if you're Jew, you can be li you, you can you can live in the big cities. It's called Pale of Settlements. For three years, they, they didn't allow him to open the school, and I I read the correspondence to a censors from Kiev to Saint Petersburg and come back back and forth, back and forth for three years. They didn't allow him to open the school only because of this number five points in his on his statues. They finally allowed him to take 12 students a, a year. Uh, so I'm going to play for you Rhapsody by Lysenko. It will be on a Ukrainian team. You, you will hear this dance melody. And you will hear this dance for girls. And you'll probably hear the kind of rhapsodic Bandura. Uh. Some elements.
nem tudjuk, hogy még mit csinálni. This my visit to Opera House and this bombing and the suffering. Music and art flourish in Kyiv and in Ukraine. This is one of the of the of the of the dance of, of, of the dance at the very end of of the opera. The previous slide, and maybe Elsa, if if you can look uh, if you, if you can turn on the previous slide, this is not the end of the opera. This is a siren on the streets, so they have to close the curtain that all the people would go to the shelters. And I was able to cut on my on my camera this moment, and all these people went to the shelters because only 300 people. When I bought a ticket, I've been told that show sold out, the opera house sold out. And when I was in the opera house, it was like a fraction. And later I've been told that only 320 people allowed to, the, to be in the opera house because this is the capacity of the underground shelter in, um, under, under the opera house. And they, and they make it kind of nice and pleasurable. I've been told recently that in an opera house in Kharkiv, which is another big city, they actually moved the opera production in the basement of the opera house. Uh, accidentally, I have a, a lecture in an art museum, I mean, excuse me, in an art school, in, in the art academy. Uh, and I was talking about history, about culture, about, and suddenly, just imagine, you're talking to people and just people stand up and just move away quietly. And I thought, oh man, I did something wrong, maybe I said something. And I found out that all the kids, about 200 kids, they have a bomb alert on their phone and they all turn off silently for my lecture. But at the very end, it starts beeping. Something like this, but multiplied by a thousand times. And this is how people experience in Ukraine daily or even twice a day. At night it was really bad. I saw a Shahed, which is missile, moving in front of me. This is a scary moment. When, when the book falling from the shelves and the vibration of the, of the glass. Um, so the first time in my life I continue my, my concert, my lecture in a bomb shelter. Instead of one and a half hour, I spent five hours in this in this in this academy. Uh, wonderful girls and and boys and this young lady was and she was and she, and she said, I'm so proud because I made this sweater for myself. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to play for you piece by Stepurko. Viktor Stepurko, he's my friend, he's my age. He's one of the most prominent composers in, in Ukraine. And, and I called him, I said, Viktor, would you mind to write something for me for, for events like this? And week two, three, he said, I can, I can. I'm writing for the chorus, but when, when, when the tragedy, when the event is too close to your face, you can, you can write, you can paint, you can just give me a time. And I said, you know, Victor, just write for me your thought, your musical thought. And what he sent to me, this is a page, three pages of the pencil written in piece, very short piece. And, and he called this Passacalia. Passacalia means a procedure, a movement, a street piece. So it's a movement of something. And this is what I got from him on, on the Facebook. My dear friend Russ, share with your friends at the concert. This motif of this piece is derived from the ancient Ukrainian monody, like monody, one, one, one line in the in church singing that we use according to my vision of Ukrainian Baroque music in connection to stylistic elements of world of the eternal crucifixion. The tragedy of the current situation in Ukraine aligns with my feelings. I plan to write a dedication 
put a small piece to the memory of those who died for Ukraine. However, since it's a very short piece, I cannot express my depth of sorrow, so I decided to forego a form of dedication. Peace to all. Best regards from Victor. So I'm going to play for you this piece. It's not even a piece, this is a kind of thought, immediate thought of. This is young man, uh, early morning, like around 8 o'clock, walk on the same street where is my apartment in Kiev, and it's uphill. Let me just make a picture of him. Street music, Pasakalia. I, I never know. It's kind of uncertainty and this movement of these thoughts that, that I experienced talking to people. There's kind of like a lot of uncertainty now. How, how life will develop and, and if life will be at all. It's, it's close to 8 million refugees, mostly women. And uh, I would like to dedicate uh, my, my concerts to, to, to this woman and children who left, who left Ukraine willingly or unwillingly. So if you see Ukrainians on the street somewhere, give them a hand, because life is very difficult now. As I said, that everybody lost someone. Um, about eight years ago, I had a concert in Ukraine. And after the concert, like, the people just come and shake hands. And, and a young man was standing in, in the corner with, with his mother, age maybe. 15, 15. And he shake my hand, and in one week, another concert. It's the same young man. And the concert was about Listen Qua and my book that I published uh, along with my mother that 
This book been eight, eight, time, eight times prohibited to publish in Ukraine. And it's been published in English first. And after that, in Ukrainian. So I have this concept about this book. And this young man shaking. And I gave him this a present. And we departed for eight years until, until this year, last year. And suddenly, in Facebook, I got a message from his mother. And she said to me that my son, because of you, and maybe because of this book, he decided to be a professional musician, violinist. And he entered the Academy of Music. And he graduated from Academy of Music in 2022. And one month after the war, he enlisted in the army. And he'd been killed. I barely knew this young man, but it's his 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 life and his and his and his deeds and his accomplishments and his and his death is very close to my heart. So I'm going to play in his memory and memory of many others. Uh, piece by by composer whose name is Rewutsky. Again, you you never heard his music because after he wrote the second symphony, his music was kind of abandoned, and he didn't allow to write any pieces for uh, symphony or orchestra or opera. Only he wrote arrangements of the songs and small pieces for piano. Uh, why I'm saying this? Because the tragedy of continuous abruption of the of Ukrainian culture is not a, a new phenomenon. It lasted over the over the centuries. So I'm going to play this piece for you <coughs> that been written in memory of his of his brother, who also been killed by Soviets. It's called Song. <laughs> against Russian oppression in Ukraine eight years ago, in 2014. 
So it's not the word two years, it's like 10 years. And I stood in front of the police riots units. Don't kill people. <sighs> Size like, like this piano. And he said they start shooting in my head, in my back, in my and on the side next to the eye, it was a hole from the bullet. And he, he said, I, I fix it. So this is his pain. And suddenly, after this event, a young lady came to me, said, you know what? I know you. You Taras Filenko. But you know me, you never met me. I am a fiancé of, of David, of this violinist who had been killed. Okay, 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 okay. I can, I can talk for hours, and I can talk about history and poetry, but uh, behind every successful event... Uh, uh, I'm going to play one piece that you would enjoy, even though it will be difficult for you. It will be a lot of... No, I'm not keep skip, skip this piece. You, you know what? I'm going to play this piece for you. Because you, you would remember this interval, and this interval, and this interval, and this interval. It's called clusters or dissonances. I played this piece for, for years, and, and you know, with this event, this piece called burlesque. Kind of like, it has a different meaning to me now. So I'm, pl I'm playing this completely different than I played like two or three years ago. I'm going to play this piece for you. It's called Burlesque by Skorek, my good friend, who is who we worked more together, but, but, but he passed away in 2020. So it will, it will be a lot, it will be seven minutes of dissonances that kind of embedded now in my music. <laughs> Thank you. 
last piece. As he said, even surprise for me, because I think that we have to support every human being who in trouble, who in danger, who oppressed, suppressed. Many years ago, many years ago, Jewish family boarding the steamship from Odessa that had now been bombed by Russians. And they left pogroms to America. The name of the son who was born from this couple who met, his name is Gershwin. George Gershwin, yes, who used his lullaby from Ukraine for his very famous piece, Summertime. <laughs> A lullaby sounds like this. And another event happened in 1920, New newly established state of Ukraine sent ambassador of culture, choir, Ukrainian choir, under the baton of cautions to the embassies, newly established embassies in France, in Italy, in Germany, in Austria. And while the, the uh, group on, on, on the tour, Russians came and cracked Ukrainian independence. Stateless choir, after one year, just wandering in Europe, they ended up in America. And in New York, at, at Carnegie Hall in 1922, people heard this song. And these two events. And I'm going to combine these two events at the very end of this evening. I'm going to improvise for you based upon these two teams. but I just want to show you this flag that I brought from Ukraine, been signed by, by those who on the front line. And they, and they put a sign for me among, among those, my three nephews and one 
Nate is still in the front line. So he signed this flag too. So glo glory to Ukraine and glory to US because we, 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 have, we, we have to be like this, like two powers next like to each other. Slava Ukraini! Slava Ukraini! Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Taras. Thank you for a wonderful uh, ex exploration of U Ukrainian culture, some of the beauty and the richness which many of us have heard for the first time tonight. So thank you for that. Before we go, I thought I would close with a quick prayer and, and benediction. Oh, gracious God, we give you thanks for this beautiful night and for all of the beautiful music that we've just heard, for the stories that touch our hearts. And we, we, we know that our hearts are sore and hurting over many injustices, many conflict, many pain and violence that's going on in the world, in Ukraine and other places. And we pray that you would bring your peace, a just peace, in all areas that are torn by violence and war. And we pray that your peace would reign in our hearts this night and always. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for coming. I'm sorry about this long, long, long story, but I would be very happy to come again to a wonderful place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.